Now I've got a new fence. This temporary gate is totally inappropriate. So I thought I'd make a new gate. But at the same time, my wife suggested making a sign to tell us what's the other side of this fence. So I thought I'd kill two birds with one stone and make a gate with an inlaid resin sign. I'm building a very simple open gate here with treated 4x2 timber and lap joints at each corner. I'm doing this in the same way as I described in a previous video, which was how to build an easy garden gate. There's a link on the screen and I'll put a link in the description below. Half lap joints are incredibly strong and easier to make if you've got a sliding mitre saw with a depth stop. However, it does take an awful lot of cutting. Whoa, whoosh. There's nothing like doing lap joints like that to create a lot of dust and although my dust collection is working perfectly I'll just change the bag there's still dust in the air and everywhere I'm absolutely covered I'm gonna have to have a bath this week so for those of you that want to see more lap joints and how to build a gate go and have a look at the video I just mentioned if you can't wait that long this is just a few seconds of the best bits and you know what the best bits are don't you Stop, that's enough of that. If you want to see some more, go and watch the video. Anyway, this video is not about how to make a gate. It's about how to make a sign that I just happened to be putting on the gate. So now, with all my lap joints cut, I've already identified which is going to be the top rail. That's the one that I put a T on, spookily enough. And the reason I did that is that the sign is going to go in the centre of the rail here and I've chosen it so there's no knots or no imperfections in the middle. So what I need to do now is to get the template of the sign that I've already printed out on A4, get it stuck on here and start marking it out. I firstly print out what I want the sign to say in different fonts, then compare them all and end up settling on one of them. I cut this out to see what it's going to look like on the rail and immediately it feels to me like it's too small and it needs to be a little bit chunkier and a little bit bigger. So back to the laser printer we go to print off another version that's maybe 20% bigger that actually looks a lot better. I mark up the rail in pencil for the centre line and the layout and then stick the lettering onto it with some spray mount. Before I do any routing, I'm going to cut the perimeter of these letters with a new Stanley knife in the same way as I installed my hinges to my door. And that's in another video if you'd like to see that. Essentially, I'm doing the same sort of process here where I'm cutting out the perimeter and then removing timber close to that perimeter. This way you get a really clean edge on what you're keeping. And in my experience, just seems to work a lot better. Today I'm using my Trend cordless palm router 
just because it's easy to maneuver and it's got a dust extraction port which really helps take that material away. I'm routing about 10 millimeters deep here and I'm aiming to get as close to my line as possible without touching it, leaving maybe half a millimetre of timber left. With most of the material out of the way, it's easy with a chisel just to clean up the lines. And because most of it's routed out, you get no bruising on the side you're keeping and the waste just pushes to one side because there's nothing to support it. I found while I was doing this, it's really handy to have a set of chisels of various sizes, especially a really small chisel to get into the awkward nooks and crannies. But I did have a mini disaster. The piece of wood between the T and the H came loose, which I set aside so I could glue back in later. What I found was routing the straight letters like T and H is an awful lot easier than the curves like the C and the O. And what also happened was the paper tends to rip up. So to get around this, I cut along the lines and just highlighted it with a pen, which then meant I could see what I was doing when I went back to the router and had half a chance of following the line. So essentially the carving is over and I'm reasonably happy with it. Anything that's straight is far easier than anything that's curved but with a bit of sandpaper and with a bit of jiggery pokery I think it's going to be okay should I say. I've glued and put back in that little bit of timber that came out between the T and the H and I've just put a bit of weight on it at the moment so that's just drying as well. But before I do any resin I really want to do a trial of resin and I want to trial two things. First of all the resin itself because I've never used it before. I have no idea how long it takes to go off, how it is for bubbles uh, escaping or how it sort of works at all. So I really want to trial that. And secondly I've done a bit of a mock-up here where one side I've painted and the other side I've left bare because I don't really know whether it's best to paint first and then the resin comes up to that level or whether I should just leave it bare and then paint afterwards. The one thing I'm not going to do is overfill with this resin because I don't have a thicknesser or a big planer or anything like that at all. So I don't really want to do any work on it afterwards. So I'm just going to bring it up to the surface level or maybe just leave it just a touch low as well. So I need to practice that and I really need to work out whether I have to paint the timber first or whether I shouldn't. This is a small relatively cheap epoxy resin I got from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below which actually comes with mixing jars and spatulas, even pipettes, everything you need to safely work with a small amount of resin. So the instructions tell me to mix the part A and part B together thoroughly for a full three to five minutes with a mixing stick until there is no drawing. I have no clue what that means. I always like the random use of capitals and small letters in these sort of instructions as well and full stops in totally the wrong place. So the one thing I am a little bit worried about is bubbles and even just pouring it out of the tube. I can see bubbles in it before I've even stirred anything so I don't think there's something that you can avoid. It does say use a heat gun to reduce bubbles and I've got a heat gun. It might be a bit vicious but I will try. The other thing I have no idea about is how much dye to put in this. I've got uh, a selection pack of different coloured dyes and I'm, in I'm intending to do this white but I don't really know how many drops to put in a small sample like this to make it really white. I don't know if I'm going to be 
either under or over. And this is the whole reason, I suppose, for doing a trial. If this one doesn't work, I'll just do it again until I do get something to work before I do it on the main piece. I wonder if I have no drawing yet. I can't see any drawing at all. I started by just putting a few drops of dye in the resin. And as soon as I started pouring it, I realized it, it wasn't enough. It was more translucent than white. So it was obvious that I was gonna to have to increase that. Although the heat gun removes the bubbles quite quickly, I left it in place for too long and suddenly I had bubbles coming out of the timber, which I can only think is moisture in the timber grain turning to steam and actually putting bubbles back into the resin, which is exactly the opposite of what I'm trying to achieve. So this little trial that I've got going on the resin is about four hours old now and it's sort of started to cure, but it's still really soft. If I just poke this into the resin, you can see that it's actually still moving, although I would still call it liquid, which means it's going to take at least overnight to get some sort of strength, if not longer as well. So the plan is to do it tonight and leave it overnight, and hopefully I've got some strength to fix the gate tomorrow and then I can put it up from there. And there's a couple of things I found out here. First of all, the pigment that I put in, I need a lot more of it because the first couple of trials here are really quite weak to say the least. And I really want it white, so I'm going to have to put a lot more pigment in than I thought, which is okay as long as I know that. And secondly, the one thing I didn't realise before I did this was I'm actually getting bleed from the resin into the timber because the resin is being sucked up by the end grain of the timber which I'm exposing because I'm cutting holes in it and I've got like a halo effect around each one of these which I'm not really happy with because I don't want there to be a shiny ring around each letter I want it just to be either white with the lettering or dark oak I don't really want it to be shiny. However, there's one of the trial pieces that isn't that bad. And that's where I actually left the resin maybe one to one and a half millimeters lower than the surface. So rather than it bleeding into the timber, well, it might bleed into the timber, but you can't see it because it's not up to the surface. So that's given me an idea that maybe that's the way to go. The other thing I found out is obviously if I'm not going to go to the surface, I really do need to paint it first because I don't want to see dark oak and the lettering and then unpainted timber as well. So I really need to paint it before I put the resin in. So I've taken the opportunity to paint the top rail to get that out the way before I start putting the resin in. So I think the best way of going here is to actually mix lots of pigment with the resin to make sure it's nice and white. And then just to leave it maybe one to one and a half millimeters low. And I think out of all of this, that's probably my best course of action. I worked out that I needed around about two of these small pots of resin to fill my sign. So rather than use it to fill half of the letters, I decided to fill each letter halfway and then go back with the second pot as a top up. This way, the final finish surface you're gonna see is gonna be consistent with the white dye. I didn't want the letters to end up with different amounts of dye. That just wasn't gonna look right. I must say while I was doing this, I was grateful that this kit came with these little pipettes because it really makes it easy to fill these letters without dripping it everywhere. So onto the second pot, and I emptied my small pot of white dye in it to get it as white as possible. And then when I started overlaying it to the first pot that I'd used, it was clear that I had a whiter consistency, which was absolutely great. And I had enough to cover each letter up to the right level.
Right, time for the dreaded heat gun. Let's see if I can do this without actually making it worse, shall we? Oh, that's not a good start, is it? As my 4x2 has a slight round over on each corner, I mimic this on the exposed edges of the lap joint, just so they match and look right, almost like a shadow gap. This cross brace I just glued into position as the gravity on the door will actually keep it in place. The only thing I did think was once the gate was in place, it was a little bit too open. So I planned to come back and put another cross member in this gate in the opposite diagonal, just to make it look right. So there you go, fully complete and in place and working as well. So I must say, I'm really glad that I left this resin one to two millimeters low because there's no evidence of any bleed into the timber on the surface. And also if I brought it up to surface level, I'd have then had to have sanded it down and without a thickness planer or a drum sander, I'm not really sure how I would do it other than expel an awful lot of effort myself. So that's definitely the DIY solution to that problem, is just to leave it a little bit low and you don't have to touch that in any way. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on the channel and please subscribe and go and have a look at our Patreon page where you can support us over there and see extra weekly videos. So until next week, I'll see you then.